And greetings and welcome to another special episode of Modern Morning Showcases. And uh, this time around, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, mods submitted for the second round of Modern Morning Madness 2017. Uh, four teams submitted mods for uh, this round of the competition. And they had to uh, make a Duma and Mage themed mod specifically for this round. And uh, each team really went in a completely different direction. With deep dark dungeons, new factions, quests of plenty, some very strange dialogue, and uh, even a portal gun. Uh, we'll be taking a detailed look at each of these rather unique mods today. And of course, you'll find down the links for all of them down in the video description below. And uh, starting out, we're going to be taking a look at the Imperial Duma Society by uh, Team Mythical Beast. And this mod adds a rather impressive looking uh, guild hall, complete with a new faction to the game world of Morrowind, just south of Bomora, along the Odar River. Uh, sort of built into the hills outside of Halar Ode. And uh, just in the exterior here, it's a rather impressive looking guild hall. Combining newer Imperial architecture with the uh, remains of a small Duma ruin, making for a visually scenic addition along the Odai River here. But uh, going on inside, the Imperial Duma Society Guild Hall is essentially divided into three main areas, including a public area towards the front with a bar and dining space for guests and guild members alike to, you know, take meals and drinks, a, a museum in the back that we'll get to here in a moment, and an upstairs with private quarters for the guild's uh, permanent staff. And uh, right away, you should notice the rather uh, unique design of this building, with a mixture of impure common rooms and hallways combined with doing uh, pipes and curious devices, and so some cavern assets as well. Apparently, the uh, guild was excavated on top of a Duma ruin, uh, leaving some of the uh, original caves here, uh, which really does make for a rather uh, unique looking entrance. And heading on upstairs, you'll find that pretty much the entire guild hall employs a creative and again quite unique mixture of doing and impure architecture. And I've got to hand it to uh, Team Mythical Beast for, you know, doing an excellent job with the interior design here. That's uh, certainly one of the highlights of this mod. And anyway, the uh, guild headquarters here has a small library up on the top floor, as well as a number of bedrooms, uh, one of which you can uh, even gain access to as you do quests for the guild. And all these rooms employ a creative Duma theme, with various Duma trinkets, pipes and cogs incorporated into the uh, design here. But uh, going back towards the museum here, the Imperial Duma Society basically uses an excavated set of Duma ruins as a large public museum for the uh, public to visit, including a number of curious machines, uh, some of which have been added in by this mod, as well as a number of guild masters who each specialize in a different field of uh, Duma culture and technology, and uh, most of them do have quests for you to do as well. And uh, we'll get to that more here in a minute, but uh, first, taking a look at the Rusty Museum, uh, you'll notice there are different display areas and exhibits in the back here, uh, many of which uh, start out as being a bit empty, uh, much like the Artifacts Museum in Mournhold. Uh, part of the quest for the Imperial Duma Society involves bringing back artifacts, both mundane and rare, to help fill up the uh, museum, and as you do, these various shelves and display stands will fill up with various Duma items, including a large number of new items added by the small that you'll uh, now find scattered about uh, Duma Ruins, but again, we'll be taking a look at that a bit more here in a bit. Now we're uh, checking out the quest here, most of these NPCs have a new research topic where they'll, you know, talk about their field of study as well as what they're uh, looking for. And a lot of these quests are a bit on the basic style, like a, a lot of fetching and gathering items in particular. There's also a quest to go around Morrowind and power up a, a new system of Duma teleporting devices, which will allow you to teleport up between various ruins and the Imperial Duma Society, which is a, a nice little convenience feature. Now, in addition to the guild hall, quests, and the museum, this mod also adds uh, new Duma items for a number of different uh, Duma ruins, as well as adding a bit more detail and clutter to these ruins, and even adding a few new Duma ruin additions with the aforementioned teleport chambers for you to explore. And uh, you can see one of these uh, teleport chambers here, and each one is guarded by a unique sort of uh, Duma mini boss that you'll have to uh, kill, and they typically have a power cell on them that uh, you'll need to install on the teleporting platform before it can uh, be activated. And uh, you'll need to do this for each of the different teleport platforms before you can, uh, you know, travel between them. And of course, each of these chambers is unique, both in appearance and what you'll uh, find inside of them. And all told, I believe there's about four different uh, teleport chambers like this for you to unlock, uh, scattered in various ruins, spanning one end of Morrow into the next. And uh, now before we move on, I did just want to uh, take a look at a couple of different uh, dual ruins here. Uh, for the most part, this one doesn't really change the layouts of any of the major dual ruins, but for a few, like this one, it does add some new Duma resources and machines to make them stand out a bit more. As well as, again, some new Duma clutter, like inactive uh, Duma staves or various other items. And it should also be pointed out that this mod does also touch on the level list of uh, Duma ruins, adding a lot of new artifacts like Duma plates, Duma beakers, Duma silverware, and even various components of Duma centurions, like Duma spider legs, uh, to the containers and Duma centurions uh, that you'll find in Duma ruins like this. 
And this does mean that there's a lot more doing loot for you to find here. And of course you should merge your level this before playing this mod in order to prevent conflicts. And to all in all, this is a pretty impressive mod for something built in only two weeks. And I would, you know, highly recommend you go check it out for yourself. And uh, next up we have Expedition to Muzzle Thinned by Team Dreamy Dramora. And uh, this mod actually starts out with a quest given by a curious Argonian in Caldera, who explains that he needs a mage to help him loot a dual ruin that he apparently dropped into the sea of the Bitter Coast region. Of course, uh, before you can accompany him to his uh, little dual ruin, uh, you'll need to pass a number of tests, which we'll be skipping over here for the most part. I will go ahead and say that the uh, writing here is pretty good, and the dialogue is well worth your time to, you know, read through. Now, the uh, first location you'll get to visit on your way to Flimdor's little dual ruin is his shack on the outskirts of La Ode, which is uh, perched on the hillside outside of town, with a near perfect view of the surrounding Bitter Coast region. And as you might expect from such an unusual character, his home is a bit on the unique side of a number of Duma machines on the backyard that seem to have an unknown purpose, at least uh, at first anyway. And you can clearly tell that Flimdor is a big Duma enthusiast. And uh, going inside you'll find a fairly small shack that's uh, notably quite cluttered with uh, Duma artifacts. And this is really where the uh, tests begin, as Flimdor will have you doing a number of activities to prove that you're actually a mage. But in order to avoid spoilers, we'll be skipping over most of the quests here, and it should also be mentioned that Flimdor does eventually become a companion as well, in case you were uh, curious about that. And anyway, moving on to the uh, new Duma Ruin here, uh, we're going to uh, spend some time checking out a few of the interiors, and of course the exterior as well. And I just have to say, right from the offset, that you can tell that this is a really unique and a one-of-a-kind Duma Dungeon and Ruin, sitting in the middle of the inner sea off the coast of Hala Ode, and looking for all the world like some sort of a Duma docking facility of an elevator that will take you down to the main chambers of this fairly sizable set of Duma ruins. And now moving on inside, we're going to be taking a look at some of the interiors here, though I'm going to try and avoid spoiling too much about this ruin, so we're primarily just going to be looking at a few various chambers that were featured in the uh, mod screenshots or in the videos provided by Melkor on his YouTube channel, so hopefully that won't spoil any surprises here. But anyway, it should go without saying that this is just a simply fantastically well designed set of dual ruins and chambers. I mean, the atmosphere and detail in here is just spot on! And a really quite impressive for a mod that was built in only two weeks. And to what's more, this has apparently become the first and only mod to get a perfect score from every judge in the Marlon Modding Madness competition. And this one really blew our judges away, and not a single one had anything negative to say about it, which is, you know, quite a rarity to say the least. And uh, far from being a typical uh, standard fair slash and dash dungeon affair, Muzzle Thinned is a really one of a kind and unique dungeon where each chamber and set of rooms is different and unique. Using a creative combination of both vanilla assets and uh, new modded assets creates some beautiful and notable environments that are simply fantastic to go through and explore. And unlike a lot of your standard fair dungeons, this one does involve a few puzzles and uh, you'll need to use a variety of magical spells to unlock various areas and ultimately unlock the uh, secret to this ancient Duma ruin, including new and exciting treasures for you to discover. And uh, really, you just have to admire the beauty of some of these chambers here, like uh, this one, which was featured in one of Melkor's videos, with windows looking outside into the ocean and revealing little uh, Duma submarines bobbing around in the background, uh, not to mention the curious experimentation tubes with various creatures in them. Uh, the atmosphere in here is just impeccable, and I really love what the uh, team's done with their dungeon and interior design, but anyway, there's one final thing I wanted to show off here. Though again, we're going to be skipping over a few things, including the uh, portal gun that this uh, mod adds. But if you want to uh, see that in action, you can uh, check out uh, Melkor's video on the mod download page. Well, so the last thing I wanted to show off here is this warp gate that you'll find deep in the dual ruin here. And this is just fascinating. Uh, walking through it on one side will teleport you to a hallway, while going through it from behind won't really do anything. And you can just uh, walk back and forth through the gates between chambers, and this really just goes to show off uh, Team Dreamy Dramora's creative abilities, and, you know, the scripting mastery of Greatness 7 in particular. And uh, once again, given that this was a mod made in only two weeks' time, what uh, Team Dreamy Dramora has accomplished is simply astounding, and I'd really, you know, highly recommend checking it out for yourself. Uh, coming up, we have Deep Watch Abyss by Team Welsh Wizards. Now, uh, quite simply, this is a pretty large uh, Doomer Dungeon mod, based heavily on the Duma Dungeons of Skyrim, particularly Blackreach, the massive and iconic former and Duma Dungeon found beneath a large chunk of Skyrim. And as we'll see here in a bit, the Deep Watch Abyss basically adds a mini sort of Blackreach underneath the Ash and Dirt of Ardenfell, with a very similar feeling atmosphere. 
Now, before you can get to these larger areas, you'll need to go through a number of ancient Duma halls, chambers, and abandoned facilities. And it should be pointed out that there is one quest included with this mod. Then we'll be skipping over that uh, for now to avoid spoiling too much here. But uh, anyway, there are some fairly well-crafted dungeons, with a lot of new assets created specifically for this project. And though the uh, mod was a bit late, the team still managed to get this released in about two and a half weeks' time, which is uh, still quite impressive for a mod of uh, just this scale. And uh, some of you may remember that Rubberman actually made a ton of Skyrim style Duma resources back in 2016. And uh, he's only added on to the resource count with this latest release. And on all, I'd say there's about, uh, you know, a good few hours of dungeon delving content here. Maybe three to four hours, depending on how quickly you go through the Duma ruins here. But again, that's uh, fairly impressive for a mod that was made in such a short time window. And uh, some of the uh, dungeon chambers here are quite massive, using a mix of both the vanilla Dumatal set and the larger Duma ruins found in the Tribunal expansion pack, uh, providing a number of chambers to gradually fight through on your way down with a number of opponents for you to face. Uh, mostly uh, Duma Centurions, but there's also a few hostile NPCs down here and a couple of creatures from the Skyrim Home of the Nords uh, province mod that's been, uh, you know, just sort of ported in here. And now moving on to the meat of the Deep Watch Abyss, we have the central sort of Black Reach style caverns that connect a, a number of Duma ruins and a sort of massive underground dungeon hub. And this place is just, you know, really scenic and invokes a lot of that Skyrim sort of vibe, with massive blue luminescent mushrooms, a deep shrouding mist, and lots of Duma towers and ruins just popping up in the distant fog, not to mention lots of waterfalls, glowing ferns and moss, and, you know, much more. Uh, this place is just breathtaking in its beauty, but also just, you know, a bit laggy as well as you can no doubt tell from the uh, sudden drop in FPS in here. Uh, even on my newer computer, the FPS average is about 18 frames per second down here, so lower ends machines may have a hard time processing this set of chambers. Uh, that said, I think the FPS drop is a worthwhile sacrifice for just the unique and atmospheric nature of this Black Reach style dungeon. I absolutely love the way it looks, and really, it's just impressive that a two-man team managed to build so much in just two and a half weeks' time. And now there are a couple of other sizable Duma ruins connected to the uh, Deep Watch Abyss here, but uh, we're going to be skipping over them uh, so as to again avoid spoilers. But having said that, there's some really uh, just scenic areas down here, and I think this might eventually become a part of Rubberman's larger Duma rebirth project uh, going into the future. But uh, what it does have right now is still quite impressive, and it's worth playing just to see it for yourself. And uh, finally, we have The Wizard of Telbranora, a love story by Team Horny Skulls. And to be perfectly honest, this is a kind of hard mod to showcase because in some ways, it is essentially a joke mod with a quest and companion that you can get and some interesting places to visit. It all starts out when you come across a Duma Steam Centurion while out exploring Duma Ruins. He appears to be having, you know, some trouble moving. And uh, once you find some bottles of oil and, you know, help him out a bit, he'll offer a quest to uh, help him find a heart because he doesn't really know how to feel affection and all that, and a uh, fair warning, there is a lot of, uh, perhaps, uh, suggestive language in this mod. It is a bit crass in places, but uh, moving past that, once you agree to help him find a heart, he'll join you as a companion as you travel to Telbranora to see if a wizard can fix him, and of course, he has a lot of the uh, standard fair companion features that you might expect with a grumpy companion scripting, not to mention companion share, and after getting your new robot friend a heart, human or otherwise, You'll get to go on the second stage of this quest, which is apparently to find your robot friend a, well, lover of sorts. And needless to say, this is a very strange mod, and is certainly quite different from anything else submitted for this round. Whether you view that as a good thing or not is entirely up to you. Either way, you'll find a Duma Consort bot on your adventures, who you can take back to your robot friend. And again, some of the language here is a bit on the crass side. And while this is kind of a joke mod, it might not be to everyone's taste, so, you know, consider yourself warned. And eventually, this all wraps up with a wedding, and I'm actually skipping over parts of the quest here so as not to uh, spoil everything. The uh, Duma Wedding Chambers were featured in the mod screenshots there, so I consider that fair game for showcasing here. And in any event, there's some interesting stuff in here, including a disco dance floor, complete with a disco ball, and uh, flashing lights, not to mention a number of uh, wedding guests and, you know, a few other things. And uh, this mod is a bit on the small side due to a late release for the first round. They didn't have quite as much time to dedicate to making a second round mod, but uh, what's here is still fairly interesting. But anyway, that wraps up the showcase video. I'd highly recommend you go check out these mods for yourselves, and uh, stay tuned tomorrow for the final challenge of Modern Madness. And until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time!